Optimal health for high performers. This is the Health Upgrade Podcast with Dr. Nawaz Habib. Hi, everybody. It's Dr. Habib, and I'm really excited to bring you a new episode of the Health Upgrade Podcast. Today, if you're watching on video, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll notice that I'm wearing different glasses. I'm wearing blue light blocking glasses. And today, this is a prompt into who we're talking to and what we're going to be speaking about. Uh, today's guest is Rudy Nassif. Now, Rudy Nassif, for most of his life, spent nights staying up late, waking up feeling exhausted, unmotivated, unfocused. And after visiting so many doctors and trying different diets and supplements, herbs, Nothing really seemed to work. And about five years ago, Rudy's depression and anguish became unbearable. So he decided to embark on a worldwide journey of learning about himself and nature. His experiences transformed his health and his life. His quest to understand this transformation and help others led him to study light, quantum biology, and the circadian rhythm. Thus, Viva Rays was born. Rudy has been educating hundreds of functional medicine and naturopathic doctors about the power of light and helping them optimize their personal as well as their patients' well-being, sleeping patterns, energy, and focus. Rudy is on a mission to elevate people's light environment to a whole new level of alignment with nature in order to live in an optimal rhythm, resulting in better sleep, more energy and focus, and higher productivity. I am absolutely honored to have Rudy Nassif, the founder of Viva Rays, on with us today to talk about light, our light environment, and how it affects our overall health. I'm honored to have you here, Rudy. Thank you so much for joining. Amazing. Thanks for joining, Rudy. I'm so excited to have you here. Um, just like me and just like so many other people that have kind of gone into the natural health realm, we have our own story. We have something that we've gone through and challenge that we've experienced. And I, I'd love to hear your story. I'd love to hear uh, about your your health, your life as a kid and uh, the camping trip you said that uh, changed your life. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, my story with health really started when I was a little kid at school. Um, I used to suffer a lot from headaches, agitation and inability to focus. And I was then uh, diagnosed with ADHD. Um, and I lived with that for so many years. And then growing up, I turned into a night owl and I stayed up very, very late every night only to lack the energy focus and motivation the following day. And eventually living in this lifestyle, uh, lifestyle day after day, it led me to deep depression, chronic fatigue and complete disorientation. And it was really sabotaging my professional life as an engineer. You know, back, at the, back, back, back in the time, I remember that my memory and my cognition were extremely low and really suffering. I can hardly read a few pages from a book before I feel that my brain is getting exhausted and I need a nap. But not only this, even my relationships were so bitter and, and so tense. I mean, I used to go through uh, emotional roller coasters all of the time. And at the time, the future to me, felt very gloomy and dark. And as you may imagine, I was really looking for uh, a solution in order to feel better. And to be honest with you, I felt tired and exhausted going from one doctor to another and very overwhelmed with all the different health opinions about what I should be doing. Now, conventional medicine told me to take prescription drugs and, and thankfully I had the awareness to refuse that. So I started the journey of experimenting with so many different diets, you name it. I tried everything. And I was taking different supplements, herbal formulas. I was doing therapy at the time. And I started doing and experimenting with different physical exercise and meditation techniques. And while all of these positively influenced my life, unfortunately, I was still stuck with the same cycle of feeling extremely wired at night and completely exhausted and depressed the following morning. So miraculously, one specific event in my life changed all of this. I traveled to Quebec up north and I spent six weeks on a farm 
camping. And I was exposed only to natural sunlight during the day and fire and candlelight during the evening. Now, within a matter of three days, something miraculous happened. I started winding down in the evening, feeling relaxed and mellow, sleeping shortly after the sunset, to then wake up before the sunrise for the first time in my life, feeling extremely refreshed, motivated, and rested. I literally went from feeling almost suicidal and foggy-headed, completely dysfunctional, to really feeling uplifted to my mountaintops, feeling extremely excited about life. And to be honest with you, I was farming outdoors all day, dancing, cooking, hiking, swimming in lake, and really like studying about light circadian rhythm and, 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 and going through books. And I was able to achieve in a 24 hour period more than I would in a month, literally. <laughs> I mean, to me, it was magic. And I kept asking myself, how did that magic happen? I mean, I didn't change my diet. I didn't take supplements. And I was meditating and exercising literally in the same way. So I was in complete awe. But unfortunately, this magic didn't last very long because when I moved back from the farm to the city, and at the time I was still living in Toronto, within a matter of a few weeks, I started falling back into my old terrible routine. And again, I went into my depression and chronic fatigue. So at this point, I was really asking myself whether it was my light environment that was causing all of this. And this led me to a seven year journey where I was deeply studying uh, quantum biology, quantum physics, circadian rhythm and light. And I was, uh, consulting the, the world's leading experts in this field. And what I learned is something very simple. And I think I knew it as a kid and I lost it. It's literally, I learned that we are light beings and that physical reality is but light that is vibrating at a lower speed. Mm. And now this means that not only light shape and mold every aspect of our well-being, but it is the nucleus of our physical reality. And the quality of light that we expose ourselves to will technically determine the quality of our focus, productivity, sleep, and well-being. I love that. It's, it clearly shows your journey through kind of that self-realization uh, as to what, what was affecting you, where the challenges were occurring. You had the positive changes. You also had the negative changes when you came back into Toronto. And that, that's really interesting because uh, I feel like too many people aren't given the opportunity to have that awareness and aren't able to kind of experience such a profound change over such a short period of time. And your awareness to be able to catch that is, is gigantic. And I'd, I'd love to kind of hear what then prompted you to, to pull back towards the idea of light, the light frequencies, the light wavelengths, and actually get into starting Viva Rays. Yeah, definitely. I mean, as I was getting more and more into understanding the electromagnetic spectrum and its effect on us as human beings, I realized a very simple truth, which is that in our modern world, we're getting very little natural light during the day. And we are being bombarded by what I call junk artificial light from our phones, devices, and LED bulbs day and night. And at this point, I was really looking for a solution so that I could still function in the modern world while not compromising my sleep and my mental health. Yeah. And I discovered at the time about blue blocking glasses. So I went on and I tried so many different glasses in the market. And to be honest with you, I didn't experience the benefits that I felt on the farm. Uh, to me, I thought at the time that, well, if I block blue light, um, I'm going to be solving that problem. And uh, I'm going to experience that euphoria and ecstasy that I experienced on the farm. Now, that wasn't the case. And um, I started wondering why. And I 
we went on and I started consulting the world's leading expert in circadian rhythm. And I was asking them, why is it that this is happening? And uh, why are these glasses not working? So I discovered from them why so many of these glasses actually do not work. And this is exactly why in Viva Rays, we do, not, we do not like to associate with the term blue blocking glasses. We like to call our technology a three lens circadian technology system because we believe that it's quite different than what's out there in the blue light blocking realm. And when I learned from these experts, this inspired me to develop something that actually works. So we teamed up with optic experts in British Columbia, and we came up with a freelance circadian technology system that is actually engineered to block a specific amount of artificial light, depending on the time of the day that is present in nature at a, at a, at a particular time and, and, and uh, throughout the whole day. And this technology system together, when, uh, when it works as a system, it will provide people with a 24 hour protection from junk artificial light. Wow. And what I love about it is that it enables me and our customers, our clients to have full control over their light environment, no matter where they are. That's amazing. Um, the idea of, of 24 hour protection is really appealing and um, for a lot of us that are, are working on our computers, on our screens all day through the day, and then we've got the LEDs lights on in the evening and the TV or whatever other screens or phones, tablets, laptops on at night, or not at night, in the evening, ideally. Um, we're, we're exposed to these things so many times, and we're, we're generally not spending that time outdoors in that natural light environment. So the idea of this 24-hour circadian biology uh, following pattern and being able to actually figure out this, this, the type of light that we should be letting in at certain times is really important. Um, and, and because of that, that circadian biology links to sleep. And we know that with sleep, uh, if we don't get good sleep and sleep kind of being that foundational tool for our mental health, for our emotional health, for our uh, optimal biochemistry, that negative things are going to happen there. So I'd love to hear about the, the different styles, the different colors of the actual lenses and, and what it's blocking out at certain times of the day to allow us to get into those uh, optimal sleep patterns that come from optimal circadian biology. Definitely. And I think we could also touch upon circadian biology and uh, go in a deeper dive about this. But to make it simple, it's very easy. Across evolution, if we were to be outdoors, which we were all the time, we'd be exposed to different color temperatures of light. Now, the reason why is because, you know, the sun is rising from the east, it travels across the sky, and it sets in the west. And as we'll be outside, we'll be exposed to different color temperatures of light and to different amounts of blue light, uh, depending on the time of the day. And these different color temperatures of light and the, the varying amounts of blue light will, um, will, will determine whether we're feeling wakeful, wakefulness, awake, or we're feeling sleepy and ready for bed. And it will act as important information to reset our circadian rhythm. Now, as you have mentioned, uh, in today's society, it's very different because we are continuously being bombarded by artificial light that emits a color temperature of 6,500 kelvins, which is, which is similar to sunlight's color temperature at 12 noon. And this literally confuses our body and our brain about the time of the day and, and making it think that it's 12 noon summertime all year long and that it's supposed to be doing one thing rather than the multitude of self-healing functions that nature has equipped us to do across a 24 hour cycle. And therefore, in order to mitigate those effects, we came up with three lens technology systems. Now, the daytime glasses, they are designed to be worn indoors only, not outdoors. And I'll talk more about this. You don't wanna wear anything outdoors and block sunlight, but when you're indoors and you're surrounded by a lot of artificial light, you would wanna wear the uh, daytime, uh, the daytime Viva Rays glasses. And those glasses are designed to transform 
the harmful narrow peak at 455 nanometer in blue violet, which is emitted by screens, phones, and LED bulbs. It transformed this frequency to a more balanced and proportionate frequency with the green and with the yellow. And therefore, it helps people to overcome those eye strain, eye fatigue, and headaches that they usually feel when sitting under those lights. And this makes perfect sense because it has been shown that the 455 nanometer frequency is very degenerative in nature. Mm -hmm. But bear in mind that this 455 frequency in nature is always balanced with different colors because sunlight doesn't come in blue uh, in, in isolation. Blue doesn't exist in nature in isolation. It comes with the yellow, orange, red, and infrared which have regenerative properties. So when we were to be, if we were to be outside exposing ourselves to that blue, there's a, there's a balance and symmetry that happens in nature, which is missing when we are in our indoor environment. And therefore those glasses are designed to create that balance and that symmetry and to reduce the sharpness of the 455 nanometer frequency. Now, when we, re when we move uh, to the evening glasses, those glasses are actually designed to be worn after the sunset. We always tell people to, about the importance of witnessing the slowly fading light around sunset, which we'll talk about a little bit more and about its effect to circadian rhythm. But considering that someone is outside, they come back home. The problem is that most of us are exposed to the second suns from our devices and, and, and the bulbs, right? And the kitchen and the bathroom uh, and the bedroom, all of these bulbs also uh, trigger our brain and, and signal the wrong type of information. So the evening glasses are designed to uh, block all of the blue light and the highest frequency green. And therefore it enables the body to start winding down, calming down, and preparing for restorative and rejuvenate, rejuvenate, rejuvenative sleep later on in the night. Now, where does this, where this, this technology came from? It actually came from the idea of the fire and the twilight. And I always ask people like, have you been around a bonfire? Yeah, absolutely. And how, how do you usually feel? Very calm, when you're around the bonfire, very warm and calm is my my recollection. Totally. So you feel this calmness, you feel relaxed, you wind down. Yet you have enough energy to cook, dance, and socialize with your friends. And this is where the Eva the Viva Rays evening glasses came from. With a, a mimics and it's engineered to mimic a color temperature of 1,800 kelvins, which is similar to the color temperature of the fire. And it works best in the shorter days of the year during the winter time, fall and the spring when the sun sets really, really early around four or five. Mm -hmm. And basically by this time, if you wear our nighttime glasses, you're gonna be feeling extremely sleepy and dysfunctional by five or six. And this wouldn't work for most of, of people in our modern world. So uh, we designed this technology so that people could mitigate the effect of artificial light yet they could still run their evening tasks. They could still drive, cook, and do whatever they need to do in the evening in order to function properly. And as soon as their evening activities are done and they're ready to completely wind down, now it's time to move to the Viva Rays nighttime glasses, which are designed to block 100% of the blue and the green. But not only this, we have a very cool feature, which, is, which really separates us from other, in the, other, other glasses in the market, is that our glasses are designed also to decrease the brightness by 20 times. Mm -hmm. And this is because circadian research shows that bright light of any color could also shift our sleep in the wrong direction and suppress melatonin production. And therefore, this glasses was designed to mimic the end of the bonfire, so to speak, when the wood turns into amber coil. And by this time, you'll be feeling super drowsy, uh, cozy, and, and ready for bed. And these glasses will definitely optimize melatonin production and growth hormones so that you could get a restful night's sleep and wake up the following morning feeling ready, refreshed, and energized. I love that. It 
the way you've spoken through this, it makes so much sense. I like going camping. It's something I do. I've been doing for many, many years, uh, go with my kids, with my wife. Um, and there's, there's nothing better than starting the campfire in the late afternoon, just getting kind of things uh, warmed up while we're about to get prepping dinner after a long day in the sun and being outdoors and experiencing that, that positive uh, balanced, not just blue, but all, all different frequencies of light balanced coming in through the day, then the campfire turns on. And that campfire, I really do get that feeling when I'm wearing the orange uh, evening lenses, which, which is really quite awesome. And it makes so much sense because I don't feel tired when I'm at the campfire. I don't feel tired when I'm using this light, but it does create that wind down uh, mindset that we need to start shifting and, and decreasing the amount of blue that's entering our eyes and entering our body because we're, we're winding down to be able to prepare to secrete melatonin when the nighttime does come around. And as you watch a campfire slowly kind of decrease in size and slowly kind of wane down, it, you'll notice the hot coals uh, inside initially are very, very bright, but they calm down and they get into this kind of reddish orangey feel. And that for me reflects what's going on with the nighttime lenses, which is uh, really awesome. So this whole idea of, of uh, light and how we are balanced throughout that 24 hour circadian biology is mimicked by the idea of natural light sources that we've needed to be able to survive for uh, so many, so many generations in an evolutionary standpoint, right? We've evolved to use these types of light at certain times of day. And so this makes so much sense to me. And then the other piece of the puzzle was the brightness. And I, this was something I was gonna bring up with you is uh, when we can block bright light, we're going to have a much stronger effect on that melatonin production. The brightness of light uh, later on in the day is a very important factor for a lot of people. So, uh, I think I've lost you there for a second. And so you had mentioned that we, with the nighttime lenses are able to decrease the brightness of light by 20 times. And that's huge because so many people unfortunately have work stuff to do on their phones or um, something on their computer or they're watching TV late at night. The idea of being able to decrease that brightness using a tool like this, even uh, if they need to live kind of in their normal modern life, we can still create this biological change with the light that's entering the eye. So I absolutely love this. And I'd love to kind of talk about the difference between um, how those lights wind down and the production of melatonin, which would ideally happen through natural light sources rather than obviously the artificial junk light that we're kind of experiencing more and more. But let's talk a little bit about melatonin, that circadian biology and melatonin and serotonin uh, kind of pattern that we noticed there. Yeah, definitely. So, okay, so melatonin is the hormone of darkness and the hormone of sleep. And it's much, much more than sleep. I'll talk a little bit more about this. But the most controversial thing that to people is that when they hear that melatonin is the sleep of uh, is this is the hormone of darkness is actually getting produced in the eye in morning sunlight and basically uh, light wave frequencies provide the energy for the natural conversion of tryptophan into melatonin and serotonin in morning sunlight and the, the thing is that melatonin will only be released at night after the eyes start perceiving the absence of blue and green light. And when people ask me, what's the best way to naturally produce melatonin? It's easy, it's two steps. Waking up in the morning, getting that morning sunlight in the eyes so that you can start producing melatonin in the eye and making sure that after the sun is setting, you start filtering out the blue and green light frequencies and getting into a darker environment so that melatonin is triggered and released into the body. Now, most people think of melatonin as the sleep hormone. However, it's much, much more than this. Actually, melatonin prevents cancer. Melatonin is also the highest antioxidant in nature. 
And this drives me crazy when I see so many people buying all these different antioxidant supplements, yet they have their light nutrition completely messed up. And I say to them, well, why don't you fix your light nutrition first and get access to the highest antioxidant in nature that is designed for you to be secreted for free before you go and pay thousands of dollars on antioxidants. Also, melatonin is uh, anti-aging. It inhibits uh, tumor growth, it boosts our immune system, it improves our mood through its connection with serotonin, it prevents uh, cardiovascular diseases, it even lowers pain and anxiety. Yeah. And when I usually tell people about this, they get super excited because they're like, well, I'm going to go and get some melatonin supplements. <laughs> and I'm like, no, melatonin is not a vitamin. It's a hormone. And there's no other way around optimally secreting melatonin if you, 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 you got to get morning sunlight and you got to block artificial light at night. And as I mentioned, melatonin is a hormone and it's produced in the eyes in morning sunlight. And it gets activated at night in response to darkness. So assuming that we can disregard the laws of nature and replace the complexity of this thousand years old biological process through which we evolved to interact with light and darkness with a human man-made pill is far off from achieving optimal health and well-being. Now, another thing that most people don't know is that melatonin supplements also have been shown to have a negative impact on the production on, uh, of, of other hormonal systems in the body, such as testosterone and estrogen. But not only this, this, uh, this industry is completely unregulated. So the amount of melatonin has been tested for several brands and companies. And it turned out that it could be up to 400% more than what it is listed on the bottle. That's crazy. But here's the thing, this is, this is not the only problem. What the brain naturally produces around 0.2 microgram of melatonin every night, okay? Now, most supplements claim one to 10 microgram, which yeah. is extremely higher than what, we actually, than what the brain naturally produces. And that's only what they claim. Never mind if it was 400% more than what they claim. Yeah. And the problem with this is that it's going to shift your sleep and circadian rhythm in the wrong direction because the absorption of melatonin will extend into the next morning. And then you start feeling extremely tired and sleepy and groggy in the morning rather than feeling, with a health, uh, feeling uh, energized and, and ready for the day. Yeah, that's, those are some huge facts here, guys. Don't, don't miss out on any of this. Natural production of melatonin within our body is 0.2 micrograms. And we are, if we're supplementing with melatonin, which is something I don't do on a very regular basis at all, unless somebody has severe sleep issues. Uh, I'm, I'm never one okay. to be a big proponent of melatonin supplementation. And in fact, if we do, it's, it's a week and that's it because we want to be able to produce this stuff naturally. And if we can put the exact right uh, light and, and habits into formation, we can naturally produce this thing, this thing that is so much more powerful than glutathione, than vitamin C, than vitamin D, like in terms of the antioxidant function to produce this opportunity for us to get to sleep, to regulate all of the other hormones, the cortisol pattern, the insulin pattern, the blood sugar, and, and uh, even the GLP-1 and the weight gain type things, they're all linked to that sleep pattern. And that sleep pattern is linked to the melatonin. And the melatonin that we naturally produce is what's coming, it's what we produce in response to our light environment. So I can't express to you how important uh, understanding the, the, the type of light that's coming in is going to affect every aspect of your life. It's more than sleep. It's more than, than junk light. It's, it's your optimal functioning. And it's a thing that we can do for free, literally by stepping outdoors. Where we can't, something like Viva Rays plays that important role of being able to block out junk light. And that's, that's why I love this tool because it allows us to live in our normal lives 
while not allowing these negative energies to come in and create uh, and wreak havoc within our bodies. So this is huge. And I, I'd love to kind of dig into kind of the negative effects of different types of artificial light, junk light right now, because I think this is a great, uh, a great point to look at the effects of artificial light on weight, on blood sugar, on, on stress and cortisol. Let's talk a little bit about those. Yeah, definitely. Um, so there's a doctor from Germany. His name is Dr. Fritz Hollisch. And he uh, published studies back in the 1970s showing how the stress hormone cortisol was significantly higher when sitting under junk artificial light. Now, cortisol, the stress hormone, at night should be around one microgram per deciliter. When I first did my cortisol test back in the days before I optimized my light environment, it was around 10 microgram per deciliter at night, which is scarily very common. I mean, around 90% of our clients who take the cortisol test, they show their cortisol peaking at night. And as a result, they sleep terribly. And this also takes a toll on their morning cortisol. Now, morning cortisol, as you may know, has a tremendously profound uh, importance on our ability to feel alert, focused, and energized in the morning. This morning cortisol should be around 16 microgram per deciliter, but it is often very, very low. And this is because most people are spending so much time under artificial lights and they're chronically secreting cortisol day and night. And let's emphasize the word night because when you secrete cortisol at night, you're secreting a hormone at the wrong time of the day. And not only cortisol will, de will destroy your melatonin because they cannot coexist together, but this will also start depleting your adrenal gland from, the, from cortisol so that when you wake up in the morning and you need this healthy cortisol pulse in order to drive your wakefulness, you won't have access for it. And this is when most often people wake up feeling sluggish, uh, struggling with momentum and needing coffee or different other stimulants to get going. And eventually when you start relying on stimulants to increase your energy, this is not sustainable and you will eventually burn out because this is working against our natural way of functioning. We are designed to have a healthy cortisol pulse in the morning and we, we, we are also designed to have low cortisol at night, high melatonin so that we can sleep. It's this yin-yang relationship between also wakefulness and sleep because the, 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 the quality of our sleep is tethered to our what we do during the day and what we do during the day will also be affected uh, with uh, how well we slept the night before so uh, with that being said uh, cort cortisol not, on not only blue light increases cortisol at night and it will lead you to wake up feeling extremely tired but also we all know that cortisol's role in nature is to provide glucose to prepare your body for the fight and flight mechanism. And this is a very important pathway because back in the day, it has led us to survive and to flee for our life if we have encountered a tiger or uh, any other animal that, that, could, that, that could be of danger to us. However, what happens when you're continuously sitting in front of your screen under your LED bulbs and you're secreting all of this cortisol at night, basically you're going to give a wrong signal to the body and it's going in, 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 to drastically increase your blood sugar level and it will lead to all kinds of carbs and sugar craving. And basically when you're chaotic, when your blood sugar levels start becoming chaotic, it leads to your mind and your emotions becoming chaotic as well. And when our mind and emotions are chaotic, it extends into every other area in our life. And we start making bad decisions and we start having tendency to make bad food choices. And 
go and open the fridge uh, at night and having all these uh, uh, munchies and eating a lot of carb and sugar. So uh, I think this is, this is where light plays a very important role in controlling our blood sugar level and our cortisol and our stress hormone. Yeah, this is, uh, just to summarize that for everybody, you can't have high levels of melatonin and cortisol at the same time. And what that means is if your cortisol is up at night, you're not producing melatonin. And what you're in fact are doing is actually increasing gluconeogenesis. What insulin does, or what, excuse me, cortisol does, is it sends a signal specifically to the liver to say that we are under stress. The cortisol level is high. There is a stressor around, whether it's blue light or an argument between you and your significant other, whatever it is that's causing that cortisol level to rise, it's saying, I need energy to be able to handle this stressor. And in order to do that, the signal of the cortisol is sent to the liver to produce glucose, gluconeogenesis. You have to produce new glucose. And what that does is it spikes your blood sugar. As your blood sugar spikes at night, it increases your insulin production, it increases your overall blood sugar levels, and that wakes you up because now we have this sugar that needs to be used at night. So all of a sudden you're feeling wired. And this is that wired feeling that so many people get at night where they can't fall asleep, yet they're exhausted during the day because the next morning when they do eventually finally get to sleep and wake up, they haven't gotten that restful deep sleep that's required to be able to be rejuvenated the next day because the melatonin didn't get up to the highest level. It didn't spike. We didn't have that antioxidant function overnight. The cortisol had spiked in the nighttime. So in the morning, it has a lot of trouble spiking upwards. And so you just feel this constant requirement for some sort of caffeine drip in your bloodstream to get you going first thing in the morning. And so this... The, the pattern here is so important. It drives weight gain. It drives blood sugar imbalance. It drives, at the end of it, insulin resistance, diabetes, and heart disease. And all of these are linked to the inability to get that good sleep. So just to summarize those important factors there, your stress level and your cortisol level at night will dictate whether or not you're going to get that good sleep. If you can wind down and decrease the junk light that's coming in, you're likely to bring that cortisol level down you're then far more likely to be able to spike your melatonin at night and naturally produce this melatonin that allows you to get that deep restful sleep. And then you'll be able to function better the next day. You do this on a repetitive basis and all of a sudden you're jumping out of bed, energized, ready to go first thing in the morning, which is something that I experience when I uh, am absolutely on track with everything and able to spend time outdoors and exercise and work out the way that I want to. And so this is an important piece of that puzzle is understanding the light environment plays a massive role in your overall function, your overall health. This is huge. And I would highly recommend that everybody just kind of understand this process, because if you're going to be able to get that good sleep, if you really want to be able to experience those energized mornings, it's requiring you to wind down properly at night. Beautifully said. Thanks for summarizing. I really appreciate it. And I want to also share a story. I think it's an interesting story that you'd really appreciate and, and that the listener would appreciate as well. Uh, you know, Dr. Sashin Patel, he yeah, shared with me this story. He, uh, he continuously uses a blood uh, sugar monitor to track his glucose level during the day. Yes. And after he started wearing the Viva Ray's, uh glasses consistently, he noticed that his blood sugar level after every meal was much more stable compared to before, even though he didn't change his diet. He was eating the same food. Yet, in the past, his chronic exposure to this imbalanced junk light was causing the blood sugar level to spike and crash. And as you mentioned, this, this extends into so many different areas. And often I have conversation with people, and when I ask them about their habits around eating food at night, all, almost all of them would say that they would be sitting on the sofa, it's 9 p.m. at night, they're watching a television or, or uh, a program on Netflix, and out of a sudden, they feel this intense rush 
in the body to go open the fridge and start eating. And when I explain to them about the relationship of this intense rush to their uh, light exposure and their habits around light, out of a sudden, when they start blocking artificial light, they notice that this rush is disappearing and uh, uh, they're replacing this time of really feeling this intense rush to wanting to eat, to doing some other things like connecting with themselves, maybe meditating, maybe taking a hot bath, listening to some music, um, writing and, and doing some other internal work. That's phenomenal. It, it's, it's amazing when you put some awareness to this, what you're able to uh, see happening. And I know Satchin really well. I worked with him for years and learned from him continuously. And um, I remember when we started, all of us at the same time actually started using the, the blood sugar monitors uh, on, on our arms at the time. And uh, I, re I remember him telling me about his spikes that were occurring. So this doesn't surprise me that A, that he continues to do so. I, I love Sachin. He's uh, the most consistent person I'll ever meet in my life, I'm certain. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that he noticed that shift. And for him to notice that shift, because he's not unhealthy by any means, but if he's able to notice that he wasn't having those peaks and valleys on insulin and, uh, and blood sugar levels after meals, simply by changing his light, uh, light intake, his light environment, it, it really goes to show that for those who aren't doing so well on that health department, on that blood sugar management department, the effect that this could potentially have is is profound it's it's drastic totally i'd love to kind of dig into the serotonin piece now you you mentioned serotonin and melatonin together and i don't know if everybody all of our listeners know about the um the relationship between the two and and mood and depression that is linked to this uh, let's, let's dig into this a little bit on the artificial light and the effect it has on our mental health, our depression, our mood, our serotonin levels. Yeah, definitely. So here's a major piece about light. Um, we have these melanopsin ganglion cells in the eyes. They're photoreceptors and they're very uh, sensitive to light and they enable us as human beings to track the sun's position in the sky so that we could know about the time of the day and be connected to our environment. And this is very important information that our, our hypothalamus or the suprachiasmatic nucleus in the brain uses to transmit messages to all of our bodies and so that we can make the necessary adaptations throughout the whole day. Now, here's the major piece. Our retinal sensitivity during the day is very low when we first wake up. And this means that we need a lot of bright light in the morning to activate those melanopsin ganglion cells so that they send a message to the suprachiasmatic nucleus and, uh, and, 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 and lead, the, lead the body to be optimally awake, focused and energized. Now, not only this, but when we're outside during the hours, we need around 100,000 lux plus of photons. And on a sunny day, we could collect those photons in a matter of 10, 10 minutes. However, when it's cloudy outside, we need more time. Now, as I mentioned before, or maybe I didn't, but uh, depend on where you live on earth and on the time of the season, around 9 a.m. in the morning, and you can check uh, this using an app called the Circadian app, I believe. You could track when UVA starts coming on in the environment. And this is a very important time because it turns out that UVA frequencies uh, provide the energy for the natural conversion of the amino acid tryptophan in the eye into serotonin. And serotonin is this very important neurotransmitters that enable us to have a sense of calm, peace, and inner connection, and a sense of being content with what we have in life so that we can move forward uh, with a sense of connection to everything around us and the sense of connection with ourselves as well. Now, when we come back at night, it's the complete opposite because retinal sensitivity at night becomes very, very, very high. Now, what does that mean? It means the longer we've been awake, 
the more sensitive our eyes become to very slight amounts of light. So much so that the slightest amount of blue and green light frequencies will actually be picked up by melanopsin ganglion cells and will disturb our circadian clock and shift it in the wrong direction. There's a circadian biologist called uh, Dr. Samir Hitar. He recently published a paper showing how this artificial light arriving at the eyes at night causes a suppression in the production of dopamine the following morning. And this means that, and it also lowers your cognition and your memory. And this means that when you're exposed to artificial light at night, you're much more likely to wake up the following morning feeling unhappy and unsatisfied. But you're also much more likely to be inefficient and unproductive at your work because your cognition and your memory are being affected. And as you, as you, as you may know, dopamine is this miraculous mo molecule that gives us the motivation, inspiration, and aspiration to go after what we really want in life. And it enables us to see things, uh, see outside of the box, so to speak. And, and it also enables us to see patterns in life and to shift our perception. So it's, it's a very important molecule combined with serotonin to uh, enhance general well-being, happiness, and ability to achieve. And when these neurotransmitters are being destroyed or low in our body, that's when we start going into patterns of depression, extreme sadness, and inability to achieve in life. As, as my MO is, I always have to kind of bring it back to the vagus nerve a little bit because there is a really important piece to this puzzle uh, that I want people to understand. And that is uh, dopamine is, is one of the most important neurotransmitters we have. It is our motivation and reward seeking molecule. It's the one that drives us to want to do things and to experience the reward of doing those things. And that's a really important uh, neurotransmitter. And, and the majority of that neurotransmitter is found in the gut as is serotonin. In fact, the vast majority of serotonin, which is our happiness and mood uh, balance molecule, is found, 94% is found within the enteric nervous system in the gut. And serotonin, through its biological pathways, is the precursor, a couple steps uh, down, is the precursor to melatonin. So essentially, we have this, this pathway, we, we take in certain amino acids, the ones that I'm talking about in particular, tryptophan, 5-hydroxytryptophan, those amino acids come into our body and with the uh, use of our microbiome, we create serotonin from 5-hydroxytryptophan. Serotonin makes us feel good. We feel happy, we feel balanced. This is the neurotransmitter that is targeted by SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. These are medications that are meant to uh, keep serotonin within the, the neural synapse so you feel the happiness longer. That's one mechanism by which uh, pharmaceuticals are working on alleviating depression. The problem is they have other challenges that come with them. But on that natural pathway, serotonin then produces melatonin a couple steps down. And this is where the vagus nerve plays that important role. As our serotonin levels rise, we feel good, we feel happy, we feel excited, we feel kind of that joyful lack of depression. And the serotonin then comes up to the melatonin uh, at the pineal gland where it actually produces melatonin specifically. And the melatonin then gets us into that calm, relaxed, ready to sleep feeling. And so understanding where the vagus nerve plays that role is the light comes in to the eyes. It sends a signal to the suprachiasmatic nucleus. And if it's saying it's too bright, then we're going to produce more serotonin. And the signal is actually sent through the vagus nerve to the gut to produce more serotonin. As the light brightness decreases and as the light frequency wavelength changes and goes more towards that red and orange light of the evening and nighttime, what it does is it stops sending that signal for serotonin production and the serotonin starts being converted to melatonin, which then increases our calm restfulness ready to sleep feeling. 
And so it does play an important role in ensuring that this pathway continues and melatonin is so important. The vagus nerve plays an important role in ensuring that that system works effectively. Beautiful. Thanks for sharing. Love it. Yeah, it's, it's a really cool thing. I always love to kind of bring it back to that important point, but understanding the biochemistry then can trigger you to have these habits that, uh, that figure it out. And that's why like being able to shift uh, and for those who are watching on video or listening right now, you'll notice I'm able to shift between kind of the, the daytime glasses where I'm blocking out the junk light uh, on the screen. And I've got these awesome tools that Viva Rays has produced these, this three lens tech system that's meant to allow me to do, I'm currently wearing the orange lenses. These are the ones that allow me to uh, wind down, be calm. It's that campfire effect. It's not knocking out all greens. I can still see some colors. This is quite, uh, quite good for that evening time uh, before it's time to wind down. And then when it is eventually time to wind down, the red lights that I'm now wearing, I've clipped on, these are magnetic by the way, and they're not heavy and I actually love these glasses. I've been wearing glasses since I was in grade four. So for me, this is quite awesome. I, I will say the lens quality is phenomenal and I do notice that they're very, very comfortable to wear. But these red uh, lenses cut out basically everything. It's either red or black or gray. And, and that means that it's really allowing the melatonin production to occur. So I would wear these at night and that would be really, really beneficial for the hour, probably hour, hour and a half before bed, before I'm ready to sleep. So if I've got this timeline, if I say, okay, goal is 10 PM to be in bed, then I'm wearing my yellow lenses that I wear during the day. I'm wearing them uh, while I'm working. And then if I'm outside, I'm not wearing these. I shift to my other regular glasses when I'm outdoors because I don't want to block the blue light of natural light. Then in the evening, I'm going to shift to the orange lenses. That'll probably be from about 6 till about 8 p.m. So that way I can start to wind down, calm down. And then after about 8, 9 p.m., that's when the red lenses can go on and help me get into that ready to produce melatonin, decrease the cortisol, get me going and, and really... Uh, get into that sleep mode. So melatonin production can kick up a notch. And that's something that I'm going to be doing more regularly. I will report back uh, with regards to any changes or amazing uh, things that I notice. I've been using these for about a week now and I love them. They're phenomenal. And I want to kind of see how it continues on. So this is huge. And, and I really do appreciate Rudy, you coming on on the show to share this really important information um, you've opened up my eyes to these really cool ideas, understanding how light affects not just the melatonin production and your ability to sleep, but really uh, your, your entire 24-hour pattern of circadian biology and how light from an artificial source can negatively affect you. I know the tool that you've created is very different from a lot of the other quote unquote blue light blocking glasses companies that are out there. Do you want to dig into some of the differences that you guys have uh, as opposed to some of the other companies that are out there? Okay. So uh, I just want to highlight something as you were talking about serotonin and its relationship to the gut. So many people get confused when we talk about how the eyes are actually connected to the gut and how light actually enables a better food absorption. But when I refer to Dr. Albert uh, St. Gheorghe, a biochemist, back in the 1937, he won the Nobel Prize with his discovery that many of the enzymes and the hormones that are involved in metabolism and digestion of food are activated by sunlight frequency, so much so that they become 500% more effective. I mean, can you imagine what 500% means? five times more efficient at digestion. That's and when I tell people about this, I say, I always ask them, I mean, what would you do if you had five times the amount of the energy that you currently have? And how would you feel? And what would you create with that? I think it's, it's phenomenal. And it's, it's now known also that the blood that is pumped by the heart is now known to circulate through our eyes every two hours. And it's the same blood that goes through our gut. And here's the cool thing, that when light enters our eyes, it actually stimulates the nutrients in our blood, allowing them to be fully absorbed by the cells. So if healthy light entering our eyes is making us at least five times more efficient and effective, what's the implication of exposing our eyes 
to human man-made deficient light all day long. And this is another reason why Osho people should ditch away their sunglasses when outdoors and consider replacing actually sunglasses with the alien sunglasses that should be worn indoors when under deficient light. Which is amazing to think, right? Like we're so used to this idea of wearing sunglasses, blocking out the natural sunlight when we're outdoors. And I, I know I'm, uh, I'm a victim of this. I, I do this a few times myself, but I tend to uh, go on vacation. I'll take my sunglasses with me. So this is something that I will be uh, taking kind of with me as, as a practice that I will be de definitely changing. Okay. I'd, I'd love to dig into some of the differences between what you've got at Viva Rays and some of the other companies out there in terms of their yeah, definitely. That's light great. blocking technology. Yeah, that's a great question. So come back to my story when I was discovering about blue blocking glasses. Uh, I went on and I bought uh, those clear lens blue blocking glasses when I first heard about that technology. And after trying them for a few weeks, I didn't experience any benefits whatsoever. And I was wondering why. And it turns out that those clear blue blocking glasses that you could get from your optometrist, and they're very, very expensive, but also that you could get online. And there's so many companies right now that are offering them. They're a marketing gimmick and they do not work. Now, why so? Because those lenses, they block blue light up to 420 nanometer in wavelength. But if you take a spectrocolor mirror and you measure the light that is emitted from the screen or from the LED bulb in your kitchen, you will notice that these devices peak at 455 nanometer and they don't emit any blue light below 420 nanometer. So it's like trying to rinse your quinoa in a pasta strainer. The, the quinoa will end up passing through the holes because it's the wrong filters. Yeah. And it's basically pointless and inefficient that makes so much sense. And I, I never really understood how you could put a clear coat on something and expect for uh, light to be kind of limited when, when light frequencies come in colors. And so the technology is definitely different. It's not the same as just going, a, going and getting a coating on your prescription lenses or whatever else is out there. Yeah, definitely. And that makes so much sense because as a kid, I was fascinated by colors. And I remember that and I still, I still am, and I, I love colors, but if you mix the, uh, the, the color blue with, with, with the color uh, orange, they cancel each other out. Yeah. And if you, if you mix the green with the red, they also cancel each other out. So in order to actually filter out the blue, the lenses should somehow have, uh, you know, depending on how much you're filtering, will have uh, a certain color to it. And this, this, this is also important to mention because not all colored lens uh, technologies function in an equal, in an equal manner. And um, technically, let, let's, let's stay a little bit with the daytime glasses because I know that there's a lot of yellow tinted glasses in the market as well. And in Viva Rays, we used to have a different lens technology for the daytime uh, that was similar to some of the companies out there. And we changed because what we realized is those yellow tinted glasses, they block 100% of the blue light at 455 nanometer. Now in the process of doing this, they wipe out all of the blue turquoise at 480 nanometer. And this 480 nanometer frequency is extremely important because it resets our circadian rhythm and it enable our brain to know that it's daytime so that we can stay alert and energized throughout the whole day. And when you block this frequency, because this frequency could be easily coming through the window, you're most likely to start feeling drowsy and sleepy at the wrong time of the day. Makes so much sense. I love this. This was a wonderful conversation, Rudy. Um, I, I'm so impressed with what you're doing. I love the idea of not just blocking out blue light, but understanding that it has so much to do with circadian rhythm you've created uh, a very unique, very, very useful tool here with Viva Rays with the TriLens system. I think honestly, it's, it's just absolutely genius. And I absolutely love 
the the tool here. I think so many people out there that are interested in really hacking or addressing their biology in, in a positive way should really look into Viva Rays. What you've done here is is uh, wonderfully genius. The quality of the product is is phenomenal. And I, I would love for you to just share where people can learn more about you, more about Viva Rays and, and how they can optimize their light environment. Yeah, so the first step to really helping people optimize their light environment is uh, downloading our ebook. It's called Light, the key to optimizing your sleep and your energy. I'll share a link with you. I think uh, this, I wouldn't call it an ebook. It's an ebook and it's, uh, about 50 pages that someone could go through really quick. And it's really designed to condense down quantum biology and quantum physics into practical means and practical aspects so that you can take uh, actionable steps today that will help you to elevate your light environment to a whole new level of alignment with nature and instantly start experiencing better sleep, more energy and focus and better productivity. So I highly recommend this ebook. Also, you can find us on www vivares.com v-i-v-a-r-a-y-s and follow us on instagram and facebook where we share a lot of our educational material i always say that vivares is not a company on a mission we're actually a mission that operate through a company I love and that. one of the our greatest mission is to come to a point where we have elevated humanity's indoor light environment a complete whole new level and we know that this is not my mission this is not viva Ray's mission this is our mission because as human beings we are light beings albert einstein told us through his law of relativity e equal mc squared that light and matter are exactly the same thing and therefore we need to pay attention to our light more and more and more and uh, we need to fuse with that and elevate that quality so that we could improve every aspect of our life. And I believe that together we can do this. So uh, tune in. If you have any questions, let us know. I'd love to hear from you. And um, yeah, we welcome you in Viva Rays with all light and all love. I love it. Uh, I will obviously be putting all of these links into the show notes um, and into the comments and, and description below on YouTube. And wherever you're listening, wherever you're learning, please share this with somebody, just one person who you feel could use this information in a positive way, right? Uh, remember, a candle loses nothing by uh, lighting another candle. So if you can continue sharing this information with somebody, just one person who could really benefit from hearing this, please do so. Uh, thank you again so much, Rudy, for showing up, for being here, for sharing your amazing knowledge and wisdom with us. I'm honored uh, and thank you so much. Take care.